Flogs, mics to your goddamn mouths. <laughs> We're betrothed in the cabin. Hello. Betrothed? Betrothed, you're betrothed. I am betrothed. Two out of three. We'll make an honest man of you yet, Hammer. Yeah. I can't see myself ever getting married. Which one really? of us are you going to marry? I, I, Me I or just... Tom? Right now. Fuck, marry, marry. <laughs> Wait, marry, marry, marry. Don't, don't, make, me, don't make me choose. Marry, marry, marry. Marry, marry, marry. One of the great games. Who do you want to marry, marry, marry? Uh, like, I gave it a red hot crack. I was engaged. That didn't pan out. So I think that's me done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the engagement I was no the problem. Believe, <laughs> I no longer believe in love. I like, I like instead of like saying, I do, like in, in some kind of wedding ceremony, it was just like, do you recognize <laughs> the man in this line? I'm like, I do. That's him right there. <laughs> My ex fiance Andrew Hamilton. That's that's who did it, Your Honor. That's the guy with all the drugs in the house. Yeah, that's him, dude. Do you recognize the house? I know it's that one. I'll never know. Um, the one thing I'll never know about you, and I refuse to let you answer it, is that joke you have about then they got my house, not the stash house. And I'm like, was there a stash house? I'd love mm. to know. I'd love to know. I think it's going to be your rosebud <laughs> on your on your deathbed. I'm going to be there. <laughs> so well, you'll be married, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. till death do us part. I'm holding him in a snow globe. By the other hand. <laughs> Do you think if there's still a, if there's still a stash house, I'd be living with my parents? I'd be living in the stash house right now. Well, I don't know. I thought maybe you rented the stash house. Unless your parents' I house did, was I the did, stash yeah. house. That's true. The, oh, the Hamilton Manor was the stash house. It was mm. the nuns all along. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your dad was wearing 3D goggles. He was fucked up. <laughs> I remember, actually, sorry. I remember we were thinking about things with the 3D goggles. I did think of something while listening back to that episode. Morpheus in the Matrix, red pill, blue pill. Mm. 3D goggles. And it's less funny when it's not on the, the right episode. Also well, less funny when you'd already shared it in the group chat. <laughs> well, I just thought maybe they'd appreciate a look inside the cabin. I think <laughs> you, it's too you've, late, mate. You've <laughs> often the ship has sailed. You've often said that you would like to invite floggers into our WhatsApp, and I think most of it is just you having jokes you forgot to do on the podcast. <laughs> How saying, good would it have been if I'd said this? Are you saying they wouldn't want that? Because <laughs> I think they would. <laughs> I, had, the, the, I had one of those moments. I'm listening to them, I'm like, fuck, I wish I'd said that. The Dan, <laughs> the Dan Muggles wouldn't director's commentary <laughs> Kevin. I, I so at this point it would have been great if I'd said <laughs> that, that reminds me of when I said uh, that time when I said Taliban me I was like on the way home I was like oh Osama bin Rahman <laughs> <laughs> are we doing this <laughs> Flog like, Cab- Hamilton you fool Flog Cabin director's cut <laughs> I just think this is Groundhog Day the Flog Cabin edition <laughs> can I have another run at that please <laughs> <laughs> well look good it was good Yeah, I, I'm glad that you told me that uh, and I'm not going to be snarky about it like Tom. I like <laughs> hearing jokes I missed out on. <laughs> there you go. Well, tell, so tell us about this wedding. Tom got married. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I was there. Yeah. I love how you directed that question to Dan, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to hear an objective these, perspective. These are jokes I wish I'd said at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been saving them. Yeah. So what time was the ceremony? Ceremony was at 3.30. Mm-hmm. Everything ran, I think, Dan, you'll appreciate this, phenomenally to time. Yeah, I mean, well, because I was I was late to the to the ceremony. Dan was the Ooh. only thing that did not run phenomenally at the time. Correct. Were they already like? Well, they, dude, in check the this of out. Where, how Just late? Check, check. Wait, do, where do we want to start? Do you want to start from my perspective or Dan's perspective on this? Well, I think let, let's go. Let's go from mine. Mm-hmm. Um, just seems, because seems about right. <laughs> <laughs> my big day, but fuck it. <laughs> no, just because like I I don't even know if you realize like so basically we're, we're going to the wedding. And everything was everything was in place. Everything was running two time. And then Mary's getting ready. I'm like, I need this amount of time to get ready. I I shower. I get out of the shower. I'm ready to get dressed and realize at that point I do not have pants. I've got everything else: tie, jacket, shoes, shirt, sh- socks. No pants. Why? I still don't know where they are. <laughs> I have Where's one pants? wedding ensemble. Wait, when was the last wedding? September. And and you had pants actually no, sorry, I went to my mate's wedding in March, but it was a, that was a higher tux okay. scenario. Okay, so you you hadn't. This was a shock because when you just assumed that you had this full outfit well, ready to go. What what I do, which I which I assume is the correct thing to do, is after every wedding, you get everything dry cleaned, and then you just leave it in the little film plastic, mm. and then you crack the case for the next wedding. Yeah. Um. I throw it on the ground covered in rum from whatever event I was at <laughs> and then my mum handles it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Have you asked Hammer's mum? Is, is there a chance she's picked it up, Dan? Uh, we don't really talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so in your in your head, you wait. You don't get your own dry cleaning done. Come on, um, I? Come on, come look, on now. When I when I lived out of home, yeah, but now what, in, in prison, are... you handled it. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine the, the state dry of... cleaning system is fantastic. <laughs> actually, Can you imagine the state of Hammer's stash house. <laughs> Shit all over the floor. <laughs> Nothing's been cleaned. <laughs> Not a Dyson in the place. <laughs> But, yeah, things have regressed since I've moved back home. Things have regressed. Okay, so you've gone back into old <laughs> habits. Things often regress once you've moved back home, I reckon, <laughs> if not before. <laughs> Fair. So in your head, you had dry cleaned this outfit, the Correct. ensemble, and so you assumed that the pant would be there. I was like, if I've got, if I've got any part of the ensemble, and thank you for saying ensemble, <laughs> I appreciate your support. Uh, I thought if anything's there, it's all there. Yeah, that's that's a fair assumption. Yeah, that is a fair I'm, assumption. So, do you, do you think the dry cleaners? Is well, this to was blame? this was the thing. Is is the fault lie with the Vietnamese? <laughs> <laughs> I never asked, but you're in the right region. <laughs> I would suggest. Uh, no, so like I was like, fuck, maybe the dry cleaners lost it. That was where my head went. And then we we did uh, doing a thorough autopsy of the missing pants scenario later. I do remember that Mary said after the other wedding, which was a midday wedding. Mm. 12 till 4. That was the whole wedding. Whole wedding. Ceremony at midday and then just a sit-down meal, no dancing. How many people? 70. Wow. Not COVID. Not, Not COVID. Okay. This is by choice. By choice, no dancing. Yeah, they were gig. like, fuck, we should have done this two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we could have gotten away with this. Daytime wedding, daytime reception, feed, no dancing. No See dancing. You later. Get yeah. the fuck out. Just speeches and eating. Oh. And then I, I, did, I did a gig after. It was great. <laughs> Ideal what, wedding. What did everyone else do at like 4.15? Everyone just went home? I guess. Oh. I think some people went to the pub. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's quite early to be doing cocaine at a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> there was no dessert either, mate. So no one knew when to do it. It's <laughs> <laughs> thrown everyone's schedule. Dude, <laughs> oh, wait. Excuse me. What time will be 10 minutes before the cake is served? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old 3 p.m. line, huh? <laughs> Uh, but no, so weirdly, did you see that in that that was in the in the flog cabin Instagram DMs, which we encourage you to message in. I do love it. Uh, the guy was saying that he like ripped his leather jacket open on the dance floor at a wedding, and the bag of cocaine got ripped open too. Yeah. And my question was just, who's wearing a leather jacket to a wedding? Yeah. Mm. That is an outrageous, crazy uncle behavior. Fonzie, what's going on here? <laughs> Introducing a new family member to the Common <laughs> Hey, they believe they believe in love too. <laughs> <laughs> they believe in brotherhood and mono- monogamy. I guess I don't know the common chairs. I got I got no experience. I'll be fair. But anyway, hammer. <laughs> uh, I mean, sure. Let's, <laughs> let's not bag him out on air. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's seven minutes fifty-two, Dan. If you want to go back, <laughs> um, they, they, they are my. They, I, look, I love all the motorcycle gangs equally. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to uh, pledge allegiance there, and I'm like, I think they're all great. <laughs> uh, so, um, couldn't find pants. So let's do a last minute pants dash, which involved Mary's uh, brother-in-law, who's kind of the same size, except like, you know, in better shape. So it looked like I was wearing my dad's jacket, but the rest of it kind of fit. And then we hightail it to the wedding. And I'm like, okay, so it says start at 3.30 p.m. is when the ceremony starts. Because uh, I had the exact run sheet because I was emceeing the wedding. <laughs> Always a good wedding to be late to. Uh, and then, so I'm like, 3.30, that actually means 3.40. We're, gonna, we're, we're supposed to be there at 3.45. So like, we're just, we're, we're missing a reading, which let's be honest, everyone can miss. <laughs> and then I'm going to get all the important stuff, right? I was like, Mary's going to be fine. Don't you worry. It's some kind of love is patient, love is kind, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard <laughs> it 5,000 fucking what, times. What is it? Like the wedding crashes, Corinthians? <laughs> Corinthians oh, yeah. something? Yes. What are the classics? Yeah. I forget. But anyway, um, so we're like, we'll have plenty of time. We get there, ceremony's still happening, you beauty, everything's fine. And then as we walk in like the back, because they're at the front, you know? Yes. Bride yeah, and groom. I, I just, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they're at the they're at front. I picked the weddings, mate. I understand. <laughs> they're looking at each other's eyes. Actually, uh, we were doing it in the round. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get more people in. The old Dave Chappelle method, huh? Uh, so, um, yeah, they're at the front. Everyone's standing there. The congregation's there. And we're walking up in the back and like, you beauty, cover of darkness, everything's going to be fine. As we're walking up, we hear the celebrants say, turn and look at the people who are here with you. The people you care about most in the world. So Tom Betty just look around. The whole congregation turns around and sees us walking in late. Like, mm. fuck! That's funny, bad timing. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have been more busted. Everyone was like, oh, he's a comedian. He's doing a bit. <laughs> this is pretty good. The performance has started already. Keep an eye on him. If you ask him what you do for a living, there's a joke coming. <laughs> He's got crowd work. 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, so that was that was the entrance. Just I've I've never I've never had such comically bad timing in my life. So I, did I, you already have awareness? A hundred percent. Because I was standing because I was standing at the front, and you do the thing where like the groom is waiting at the front of the congregation for the bride to arrive, and it's kind of that awkward thing of you say hello to some people, and you're like, well, how far back do I really go? So I said hello to family and anyone who was seated, and then I just kind of hung out the front um, with the celebrant. And as I was looking towards the back, I noticed like very naturally it had gone to bride and groom side which i'd never mm. really i didn't think that was a thing but it 100 percent was and i was like oh i wonder i wonder who dan will be with like who's dan hanging around and i saw all the comedians i'm like oh not with all the comedians together no dan and then i'm like dan's well, he not, hate, i don't think dan's here he hates a comic hang so, <laughs> <laughs> so far so good <laughs> he's hanging with more professional comics at a different wedding <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm actually <laughs> So that is funny. Okay, so because of that, you I, suddenly you're like, this bloke's not here, eh? And I said to Dan and Mary, <laughs> and it seems like something I'd say just to make them concerned, but I actually genuinely thought it was like, am I going to have to MC my own wedding? <laughs> like, I'm like, who's backup? M- MC and headline. <laughs> That's bold. That is bold. <laughs> bold way to start your new I life mean, that together. Is, that is what you do at your tour shows. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, oh, hey guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to be out here. I'm going to get to know you guys. But before I do, a couple of my friends are going to come out and say <laughs> things. This next guy, big fan of his, he's my father. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to support new people. <laughs> Follow him on Instagram. <laughs> Yes, so I got absolutely busted on the way and late to the late to the wedding. But you were there for the vows. I was there for the vows. That's the most important. I you were there for the vows. Wrote their own vows, which uh, I got to say, Mary and I, when we were getting married, like, should we do the own vow thing? Oh, it's always going to be a fucking nightmare. They're never going to be good. Very good. Very good vows. You didn't write your own. That seems very off brand yeah, for who you. Would, who would want to be thoughtful and write their own vows? I mean, I, 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 di- I didn't write my own vows. I did. I did read like unconventional vows. It was just a pile of that. <laughs> they say marriage is hard Made easy With pilot <laughs> uh, That's good Can you uh, imagine I, I re- There's somebody Who's done product placement At the wedding I thought it would be very funny Because we had a content creator At our wedding You Which did is, They yeah. were filming vertical I noticed Filming vertical 169 <laughs> And uh, By request <laughs> And uh, I thought Like would it be funny And I actually raised it with Beanie Just to see what she would say And then in hindsight Like he can't do this is to uh, say in my vows, uh, I, I promised, uh, I love the way that you, I always feel supported whether I'm at home with you or I'm at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, <laughs> March 27th through April 6th. <laughs> Use the code forever do us part till, uh, till death do us part for 10% off. And then I thought, no, I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing the full run, maybe. <laughs> but uh, a half run seems a bit indulgent. Uh, actually, in fairness, I, we didn't do this. And, and Mary and I are still questioning like having like a wedding party at some point. You know, oh, just yeah. to celebrate because we had the COVID wedding. Ten people. What a money spinner. Uh, the, whole di- the whole thing costs less than a grand. Oh, my God. Yeah, That's it feels so good. good. Including Tom- like admin costs? Absolutely. Oh my God. Dude, Tom just got hard. <laughs> <laughs> Made easy. <laughs> uh, it no, so co- yeah, it was covered by pilot advertising. <laughs> uh, Ganju had this idea because we were talking about Rohan Ganju, Melbourne comedian, one of my favorites, very funny guy. Uh, he he had this idea. He's like, why don't you get your wedding catered by Uber Eats or Deliveroo? So you contact Uber Eats and Deliveroo. You say we're having a wedding. We want people. Don't worry about dietary requirements. You get to order exactly what you want. You tell them you're doing it. They film a little bit of it. Like people coming in with bags, like, you know, in the backpacks and shit. And then they'd probably give you like a big discount on it. That's great. I think it's genius. It's really good. Yeah. Like you'd have to have like some kind of Uber Eats maitre d' like, you know, getting everything because you can't mm-hmm. obviously let them come into the wedding and ruin it yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. with reality. <laughs> they get special formal black and white cubes. <laughs> <laughs> their, little, their little scooters have the ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the little tin cans thrown behind the back. It boggles the mind like what proper internet influencers must be trying to like get deals on for every part of that, right? Surely. For a wedding. Like rings? Mm. Yeah. That's, I mean, I know that there's been plenty of, like, uh, I say celebrities in inverted commas, that have like sold their wedding deal to like um, uh, Woman's Day and that yeah. kind of stuff, right? And, well, they, that, and they have like exclusive coverage of the wedding. Well, that's right? like coverage, but mm. I mean like, you know, you're actually outsourcing like, you know. Yeah. It's like the plates brought to you by. That's right. Like how far <laughs> Enjoy they, these crystal glasses, but, Swarovski. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like how far could you go? I think you should. I think you could probably and Hammer when your wedding comes up, you know, as the mm. king of the internet officially. 
Mm. 20 million views on your on your alpha bro thing. Mm-hmm. That's 20 oh, and 30 oh, now, right? Uh, tw- two vi- one's on 19.6 million and the other one's on 21 million. So no, not that you check that often. I check it <laughs> every couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I reckon you could you could go hard. You reckon Wahlburgers could cater a, a, a flog wedding? Oh, that would be so oh. good. That is, that's making me want to get married. That's, you know. <laughs> Do you reckon you get Donny Wahlberg <laughs> to be the celebrant? <laughs> <laughs> Man, dreams could come true. Fuck. Um, that's so, what I've so been thinking about um, the fact that now I have 150,000 followers on Instagram. Zero brand deals. No one's approached me. I'm like, how big do I have to get before someone's like, we're gonna, we're, we want to talk to the ex-con. We want, we want brand deals with this guy. I mean, you got to start your own brand. I'm still so keen on ex-condiments. 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 It's a win. Oh, go, yeah. Okay, so I've got to stop waiting for everyone else and just go proactive, you reckon? Yeah, I think so. Then you need yeah, to start your own right. thing. I, I, think, I think if you found like the right kind of piece of shit content cooperative marketer person, you could be, you could be covering everything, mate. <laughs> I'll, Under- I'll flog anything. You'll flog anything? I'll flog anything. <laughs> <laughs> we should really get you to do the ad read more. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could make some interesting deals. <laughs> this week, Frog Cabin is brought to you by North Korea, the greatest <laughs> country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Dictatorships made pleasant. North Korea. <laughs> uh. That, that just made me remember uh, I was looking at the news today about... Uh, Thalidomide. Uh, How many limbs does your baby need? <laughs> <laughs> Thalidomide, now like your child, 25% off. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the savings on shoes. <laughs> Speaking of shoes, no. Um, <laughs> Go on, Hammer. You've got it. You've got an idea. No, I, no, I, I could. No, I could no, see. No, I could no, see your matter. brain cooking. I can see it churning. I uh, can see you. What did you see on the news? No, it what, what, what happened? What, what prehistoric gr- creature they bring it back now? It's too grim. Don't worry. It's about too it. grim. <laughs> yeah. I just said brought to you by thalidomide. <laughs> Tom said twenty five percent off, just even, like your baby. I don't even know what that is. Uh, like it was initially like thalidomide was in some birth control, wasn't it? I don't know what. Yeah, but it was a. I don't know, it was a chemical compound that uh, caused pregnancy difficulties. Birth defects. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, It was a big thing in like the 80s, 70s? Yeah. And it, was, and it was funny 60 seconds ago. Yeah, <laughs> and now you kind of ruined it. We're going to have to play Billy Joel's We Didn't Start... I Didn't Start the Fire? We Didn't Start the Fire? <laughs> All right. Oh, well, I, well, we, didn't, we didn't start the fire. We well, didn't start the fire. I was just looking at the news today about the, ice, the ISIS attack in Russia. Here we go. Right? Terrorist attacks kill, kill, killed over 100 people. And the Russians have caught these guys, the terrorists mm. involved. Is it, wait, is, I didn't even know this happened. Is this recent? Yeah, it's yeah like, like a couple two of days, days ago. ago. Yeah, right. And the Russians have caught the, the have, uh, terrorists. Have ISIS made a face turn? They're like, we, we love Muhammad, but we love Ukraine more. <laughs> 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 what a plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> and the Russians have caught these terrorists, right? And they're all shown up to court and they're all their faces are like just puffy and swollen. And one of them's missing an eye and one of them's missing like an ear. Mm. And it's like there's been so much scrutiny over like the rule of law in Russia. And then suddenly everyone's ah, you know, it's terrorists. <laughs> so, and you don't think that's fair <laughs> you think terrorists deserve equal representation well, they deserve a fair the, trial the headline was they like, should be able to hear it it was like it was just like russian uh isis terrorists caught um many missing organs or, or limbs and i was just like Fuck i don't know if you know this hammer but the russians are really against the lgbt plus community <laughs> and the t stands for terrorists <laughs> 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 so uh, were you saying it was like surprising that the Russians were like, we're going to fuck these guys up? Or no, I just think it's funny. Like we're, we're always like uh, against Russians treatment of people that like, like the, 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 the looseness arrest. of their rule of law. Yeah. But then suddenly it's, but suddenly it's like terrorists. You're like, actually this time it's like, we'll let it slide. Mm. But the guy's you, like the guy shot up to court. One's missing an eye and an ear. The other's missing an ear. Yeah. I'm, this is how dumb I am. As you would, uh, as you were going through that, I'm like, what are you, are you trying to make a point about ISIS's recruitment policy? <laughs> like, why are they, guys? What? There's a reason we say you should kill yourself. Because <laughs> being caught is going to cause more pain. You're looking. The, those mug shots look awful. You're <laughs> right, ugly guy. They're going to sketch you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> There's a bloody Urukai in court today. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the guy from Lord of the Rings are all like puffy and weird. Oh, like okay. The, the goblin-y things. I thought they were called thalidomides. <laughs> Urukai? No. I thought that Uruk- Urukai? I don't know. Orc? 
That, oh, yeah, Oak would have been good. <laughs> Oak would have really saved Mason fan. Uh, I got a bit the, of come with those special, Russian terror suspects the right there. Special niche orcs that were trained by Saruman. All right, there we go. Exactly, yeah. They yeah, were bloody Lord of the Rings nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sure showed me. <laughs> I thought Legolas over here would get it. <laughs> I don't mind that. I remember that. <laughs> uh, adult guy, blonde hair. I don't know. I don't know what you want. He's about to start speaking in Elvish. <laughs> Dude, does anyone does anyone's like have anyone in their lives who speaks Elvish? Like my friend's dad can. Oh, He's like he learned the language. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, I don't know anyone. Oh uh, well, Hammer. Well, I mean, it is nerdy that Tolkien wrote a whole language, right? I mean, I'm just saying, if you made all your drug deals in Elvish, I think you wouldn't have a conviction. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would have got away with it. Just I? like, what were you what were you talking about? Oh, just the you know live action role play we're doing on the weekend. <laughs> the judge is like, yeah, whatever, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this guy's not dealing drugs. He's a fucking dork, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting on the front page as the LARP king of Sydney. LARP <laughs> king. <laughs> <laughs> but is that that Thai dish? <laughs> <laughs> Bit of fun. Uh, so right, we got, we're at the wedding. Was there anything, anything more at the wedding? Oh, Tom said a very nice thing about me in his speech. There's a photo of it. There's a photo of you. You would have hated that. It. Yeah, I the mean... The guy hates compliments. Dude, this was... This was I think I might even remember it verbatim, but so like I'm seeing the wedding, I'm, I'm I'm doing all right, you know, a couple of loves, a couple how, of people. How did he go as MC? Did great, really yeah. great. Yeah. It was awesome. People people bought some t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I, <said he> should, <laughs> I was like, I don't, don't give me any money, just trade me for your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I said he should uh, do USBs afterwards with a video of him emceeing other weddings. <laughs> <laughs> did you mention the pants incident that night? No, no, no. That was just a time because I was I, I was just like, I'm going to leave this. He's busy enough today. And he's like, where were you? And I'm like, I didn't have any pants. <laughs> I broke immediately. <laughs> if I was a terrorist, I'd have both eyes. Let me tell you that. <laughs> you, and Ma- you, did, you and Mary did the thing of like, do you want to hear the story now or later? When would you like to know why we were here? Like? you had the glad, handsome family. I'm like, well, I guess you guys would probably choose later, knowing you two. How, yeah. <laughs> how big was this wedding? How many people were we talking? Ninety five. Ninety five. All right, that's that's like for for white people. That's that's <laughs> pretty good. And they <laughs> sure were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which Tom also mentioned in his speech. These are my friends. I'd like you to know. be more diverse. Like, <laughs> would you? <laughs> Uh, ethnic wedding that would be considered pathetic and insulting, but for a white people, that's like that's good numbers. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, that's that's as much as you really want. I think so. Yeah, just you know, same same with tests. You know, ninety five for white mm. people, very good for <laughs> Asians. What were you thinking? <laughs> you've insulted everyone. You've dishonoured the family. Absolutely. Um, so, what was the nice thing you said about dad? Well, you said you you. I reckon, I reckon I got it. So I was I was I was emceeing, and when people were speaking, I'd 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 be outside. You know, I didn't want to draw any focus. So Tom's like, so to Dan, my MC, uh, who's currently outside pacing. I was like, yep, he's, he's noticed. And uh, then it was like, look, I'm not. This isn't going to be funny because there's nothing Dan hates more than sincerity. <laughs> And I laughed because I'm like, that is true. Because yeah, nothing could hurt. No, nothing could hurt his feelings more than being vulnerable right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else, it was kind of like little roast, then a nice thing, little roast, nice thing. Dan, just the nice thing. Didn't oh, even try. Wow, that got him. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but soft cocks in this corner. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, and then yeah, my I, my, not- my friends that my who were uh, my best men had two of them. They were both like. What what's Dan gonna say about us? What do you reckon he's gonna? We need to have something ready to go. We need to have a comeback on on the fly. Mm. Ah. Didn't need it. Didn't need it. Can I ask about the food? <laughs> there was share plates. All yeah, right. There was, was it, the, were the, there canapes. There were canapes. Um, I, I would say insubstantial canapes. They were little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not many of like I found. I you know how I find when you're at a wedding like you kind of notice the canapé like the frequency of canapé mm. like how often you're getting offered I, I probably as a guest I didn't eat that much because I was nervous but I would have liked more frequency of canapé I would say was there Peking duck pancakes there was not alright why that specifically that's um, how I measure the quality of a wedding <laughs> If they have them, it's a good wedding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very specific criteria. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about the peking duck pancakes, <laughs> hoisin sauce. Boom! I'm like, fuck, we're at a primo wedding. <laughs> Dude, this is such a lovely Jewish wedding. Nah, it's shit, no peking duck pancakes. <laughs> it's not Christmas, Hammo. <laughs> That's very funny. I mean, in fairness, when you say that, I'm like, yeah, I would fucking love that. I would too. <laughs> I usually build rapport with the people serving the canapes, and they also they, they hate their <laughs> and they they, they hate their job. 
right? Yeah. So if they know there's a guy that can go to and clear the fucking plate real quick, that they'll they'll come to me. Oh, they see you as like a food finisher. Yeah. If, if they're walking around with like two things left on there, and I'm like I just want to get this done, they'll, they'll just I straight away I'm like known as the closer, the guy. <laughs> The guy Hamo is the finisher. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at what point during the six peaking duck pancakes you eat do you establish rapport? <laughs> <laughs> Number one. <laughs> he's very polite. He covers his mouth when he's like, give me another. <laughs> you call this dinner? <laughs> I just say, if you're struggling to get rid of, rid of anything, just, you know, I'm your guy. I'm your man. Yeah. I just and they <laughs> like that because they hate it when they're hovering around a bunch of old people that are just like, you know, they've had one and they don't want any more and they're like, what am I going to do with this thing? So they just want to have at least a couple of guys they can lean on so they can go back to staring at their phone in the bloody, in the kitchen or uh, bring out another plate. You definitely do speak to the hospitality at weddings uh, segment because when you, when we put out that video about doing cocaine at weddings, the amount of people who work at weddings who are so thrilled that you'd shone a light on this little idiosyncrasy. <laughs> they were so happy about it. They were like, the amount of comments were like, worked at weddings for 12 years, definitely true. I've spent a lot of time in hospital, baby, on both sides. I've owned, a, <laughs> I've owned a restaurant. I've had to try and mend that divide between front of house and back of house. I've worked as a as a beer pourer for many years. I know, I know about the ins and outs of the industry you're on like, both sides. You like the goddamn party whip in the government, <laughs> <laughs> guys? Let's get together and get this motion passed. And by that I mean, pass me a Peking duck pancake. <laughs> <laughs> He's rolling up a peaking that pancake and doing a line with it. Uh, all right, so it's just like the back of the house. You don't want to serve it. Front of the house. You don't want to eat it. Give it to me. <laughs> Ammo. I'm a solver. So there were canapes, but not enough in the rotation, and they were insubstantial. What were, what, what were we talking for Maine? So sorry, what was it? For what you said it was share plates. Share plates. Okay, share that's, plates. That's a pretty good idea. There was chicken. There was lamb. I yep. believe uh, there was there was some leaves. There was some leaves. There was potatoes. There was potatoes, and there was a ravioli. For the Check this out. We were at the wedding with a comedian. Uh, I'm going to name and shame Sam Bowden, uh, one of the people who played uh, Tom Wick and Bingo uh, mm. at the Bucks party. Yep. And there were there were you know kind of six people at the table. There were six bread rolls, and he ate two. Oh, that's scandalous. That what at, like at the start? Yeah. Mm. Oh. And well, and because he was like, oh, why? Like, why are you guys sharing a bread roll? He's like, oh, they only gave us five. He's like, oh, no, but I had two. <laughs> so it was one per person. I'm like, why'd you eat my bread roll? And he's like, oh, I thought they'd bring more. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm like, you think there's infinite bread rolls coming out at a wow. wedding, you fucking lunatic? I mean, uh, yeah, uh, you could have a second if you ask for a second. You shouldn't assume that you can have one on either side. That's that's. Oh, no, they probably. were just like all in the middle, but he just oh, thought like okay. that would be replenished right. like Bottomless water. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a social faux pas. But I like the idea of the share plates because there's nothing worse than when they do the um, alternative plating oh. and you get the food envy for the one you didn't get. Alternate drop sucks. Mm. It's the worst. Everyone everyone wants steak. It's like steak or fish. It's like, mm. well, I hope I'm on the odds or evens of getting steak. No, nah, like, I, I don't mind the swap. I think with the share plate, I never get enough. I think maybe because I MC a lot of weddings. Mm. So like the food comes out, I'm not there. I like get the scraps. Yeah, there weren't many share plates in the courtyard <laughs> where you spent most of your time. Yeah, but there was a lot of room to pace. <laughs> it, sure was. it was lovely out there. The way, a lot of the weddings I've been into, there wouldn't be an issue with the share placing because as we've talked about before famously, you have cocaine after the mains, before the desserts, but there are people that jump the gun, right? Uh, so, and, and you can tell, you can you look at people and you're like, really? When they're like, I'm not hungry when the mains come out. Yeah. <laughs> So all you need is a couple of those to just completely crumble early. And then suddenly, share plates, you're, you're getting as much food as you want. You're going to be such a baffling father. <laughs> when your kid's like, I'm not hungry. It's like, you doing cocaine now? <laughs> we haven't even had dessert. You're seven years old. <laughs> the Sara Lee sticky date still in the freezer. What are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> no cocaine, you'll spoil your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Have it after. <laughs> <laughs> thought I raised you better than this. That's it. To the stash house. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Having a stash house for your kid. <laughs> you got the main house and the naughty stash house. <laughs> That's the timeout house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the stash house is for all the bastard children. <laughs> they don't have my last name. They will not live under my roof, but I will pay their rent. Uh, I'm not a bastard. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking uh, about lost so, in the wedding. So, so share plays. What, what was the food that was shared? Uh, so it was la lamb? La lamb, chicken, salad, potatoes, and ravioli. Mm. Oh, there was ravioli. Yes. Was ravioli for the veggies. Mm. Okay, so like a spinach ravioli or something like that? Pumpkin. Pumpkin ravioli. Pumpkin ravioli yeah. with a burnt butter sauce. Mm, that's pretty good. And uh, how, was the, how was the lamb? Lamb was good. Lamb was good? Lamb was good. Mm. 
Right of the lamb. And then uh, and then for dessert we had we had double dessert uh, because there was no cocaine being taken at my wedding. I don't believe, <laughs> unless you caught any. I don't think so. I I didn't I didn't see anyone uh, who was that chatty. So mm, no, no, I don't think so. So doubling desserts. That, uh, I mean, this was essentially in my head. I'm picturing a nerd wedding, right? <laughs> so, like, I can understand why it was low on <laughs> <laughs> nerd wedding. Nerd I wedding. mean, there was a land party at one point. <laughs> <laughs> No, nothing weird, but a couple of people did start playing like Pokemon cards in the corner. <laughs> so uh, this checks out that it was low on cocaine. Mm. So, yep. All right. Mm. It sounds like it was a, a good wedding. It was, it was a good wedding. Did you enjoy yourself? That's always an important thing to ask. I had a great time. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. I had a, I had a really good day. So where was the rep session held at? Uh, they were both at Vaucluse House. So there's like a, there's a uh, kind of garden... On one side, and then the restaurant on the other side. So the re- the ceremony was in the garden. The reception was at the uh, restaurant. Mm. How about one thing? One thing I had with the with the venue was a, nit- a nitpick. Nothing. Nothing. To the people who organised the wedding, just for the people who put it on. No wine. Got no wine bottles on table. Which oh, I found very bizarre. Mm. Yeah, that is annoying um, because particularly when you're at a wedding, a lot of people like to imbibe, right? They like to imbibe. Wait, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you do know Hosper. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's nothing more than having to like constantly look someone in the eye and be like, yeah, cunt, I'm having a fifth wine. Like you don't want to have to. Like, well, just keep them coming. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, there's yeah. speeches. We're seated. I got to. I got to cheers. Yeah, you got to. You got to be able to refill. At a wedding, yeah, you want to be able to repour. I was at. Uh, you should. Do you expect red and white? I expect red and white on a table at a wedding. Yep. It seemed like they were doing an RSA thing though. It didn't seem. You know what I mean? It seemed like they were like, oh, we can't just let you do that. And I'm like, nah, you can though. I was at an Indian wedding and they had wine, um, both white and red wine, and then they had bottles of vodka, full bottles of vodka and scotch on the table as well. Oh my nice. God. Mm. Go- uh, was it decent vodka and scotch? Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it was, but I know that it was not, it was like... It's not like Johnny Red. And uh, I think it was Grey Goose. Ooh. Whoa. Yeah. Fancy, but obviously fancy. still not a good wedding because I'm going to throw it out there. Indian wedding, no Peking duck pancakes. <laughs> 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 True, but they did. What did they have? I can't remember. They had, anyway, the food there was sensational. Oh yeah, and there was no risk of it running out. It was like a buffet. A buffet. They had a buffet. Like with like a bay, bay marie. Like you go up and serve. Mm-hmm. Serve yourself. Yeah, and then you sit back down. You fuck you. I have had that. Mm. Yeah, it was at an Indian wedding as well. Actually, did nice. they send people yeah. by table like a school camp? <laughs> no, it was just like where free for all. It was just like go. No, it wow. was like school, but you go in height order. <laughs> <laughs> I but found people weren't um, there. Were people being polite, not like immediately when they, could, they said anyone can go. I was the first. <laughs> 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 I looked around. I'm like, no one's going, and I'm like, well, I better lead. I was the first and last. <laughs> <laughs> I better just show them that like it's okay to go get food. <laughs> <laughs> you colonized their wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show them how to behave. Like, you know, they probably didn't understand. You go up, you get the food, you yeah. eat it. Good stuff. <laughs> it, was, it was really good food. All right. So, good wedding. Hammer's outside teaching the cousins how to play cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Just a cup of tea for me. Thank you. Uh, doing lines off the bales. <laughs> they, they danced all night as well. The, in, the Indians really got around the DF and they were doing like a lot of dancing which I was like that would hurt my quads there was just too much um, dropping to the floor oh, getting real low back, getting real low all mm. the time and I was like Are these did, guys did, you, did you attempt it were you drunk enough to be that guy I, oh. I, I tried it like once or twice and I was like that's me my, my quads are already like burning did you get a henna tattoo <laughs> Can you get those at a wedding? Yeah, did you get a wedding? That wasn't that. No, oh, that, that wasn't okay. that wasn't available. That wasn't an option. I probably would have drunkenly got one at some stage. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, yeah. Did the Mike Tyson on your face? <laughs> I mean, you can do that, right? If it's going to come off the next a couple of days later. Isn't it like eight weeks or something for a henna to come off? It's oh. quite a while. Isn't it? I think I think it's more like two. I don't know because out of my mates, one yeah, Mary Mary got some henna done. Oh yeah, I think yeah. I was like, it's it's like a it's like a girl thing, right? And they're like, no, and I'm like, I'm still okay. <laughs> I'm I'm doing stand up comedy. I got white in the show title. I can't have just henna on my hand that everyone's going to be like. What what happened here? That would be I had so a Grim funny. Reaper on my arm when I was like twelve in Bali. A Grim and, Reaper, yeah, in and henna, in henna, and I, yeah, and that was the start of my tattoo journey. <laughs> <laughs> you started with the Grim Reaper in yeah. Bali. I look, bro, I got some ink. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first tattoo? First real tattoo? Uh, I think it was the oh, I, my crocodile on my ankle. Oh. Which doesn't, which is blurry. It's hard to tell. It's even a crocodile. Oh, I think is that a crocodile? I, yeah, that's a crocodile. I got it in, I got it in Bangkok. When I was almost passed out and 
I'd been I'd been given the nickname the crocodile on this holiday mm. because I kept catching people in a drinking game while I was like sitting in the pool with my eyes above <laughs> the water. <laughs> <laughs> a buffalo? Yeah, buffalo. buffalo. <laughs> yeah, so we're playing buffalo and I would catch people on buffalo. If anyone doesn't know, buffalo, you play it when like you're with a bunch of the boys and you go on a trip where you have to drink beers the whole trip with your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you have to drink with your left hand. Mm. And if you're ever caught and it's the moment that liquid is goes into your mouth, someone calls out buffalo, you've got to scull the drink, regardless of whether it's completely f- brand new beer or, or near the end. And if someone is right-handed and they drink with their left hand and you call out buffalo, that's a false buffalo. Mm. Then you ha- then it comes back on you. you got to scull your So beer. in a group of 20 guys I went on a trip with to, uh, to Thailand, there was like two guys that were left-handed, which is really throws it because mm. you've got to remember exactly who's who, who's who in the zoo. Yeah. But and it must have been hard to distinguish those white people with your eyes just out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> but the best one was like... Oh God, man, which year 12 jerseys are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> the, be- the best one was seeing a guy wake up in the morning hungover, like, looking like death, and then have a beer sitting by, the, <laughs> sitting by the pool. And they just want to have like a really casual beer to ease into it. And then I'm sitting at the pool like, buffalo. <laughs> and then they've been awake for five minutes, so they've got to skull their first beer. It's like a really, oh. it's a rude awakening. I loved, I loved buffalo. The other one I loved, do you ever do uh, God Save the Queen? You know that no. one? Where you have a penny and you drop it in someone's drink and they got a, she's drowning. She's at the bottom of the, dr- the drink. You got to save the queen, drink it as fast as possible and get her out of the, get her out of the cup. So um, you've just, you just got to drink the beer. It's just like scull the rest of the beer that I put the coin in. I got to put yeah. the coin into your thing without mm. you noticing it. Yeah, okay. And then you got to scull it. Yeah, that's good. Do you, do you guys have that? Remember that phase where you'd hit the top of other people's beers with oh, your beer? I've done that fizz always up? hated Ever. it. Ever. It's just like so funny. So many shattered beer do bottles. You know what's funny? Like, I, I hated it. I liked it when it was unexpected. I hated it when it was like, all right, that's the 12th time that's happened to someone yeah, tonight. Yeah. We get it. It's such a waste of beer. I'm against <laughs> it. I've never been. So I've never been a supporter of it. Uh, but Buffalo was even funnier when, like, you do it. It's, it's any drink, so like a mm. guy could have be having like drinking like a liter of milk, a flat white, <laughs> <laughs> and any any beverage. Yeah, yeah. I rate that. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't think you were being called the crocodile in Thailand because like when you got like your pad Thai for dinner, you drag it into the pool and spin around. <laughs> <laughs> death roll. Death I'm roll. just death roll death with a pad Thai. Noodles. <laughs> <laughs> there was like, he realizes they're already pulled, right? Like it's all good. <laughs> Uh, so yeah that was the reason why when I was in Bangkok and I was going to get a tattoo I was laying down this chair I was like half pissed and the guy's like what do you want and I was like fucking crocodile there you go got a crocodile but it looks like it's like the Lacoste crocodile it's like blurry it it does look like yeah yeah, it's hard to make it out but one of my mates got a uh, he got a camel on his big toe and for a camel toe, but, <laughs> but it was such a shit tattoo, and it's like age, like it's a bit blurry. So now it just looks like a like a like a turtle, like a fat blob. It's like <laughs> it's indistinguishable as a as a camel. Oh, yeah, I don't have any tattoos. My friends never got any. Well, I, I, as I, I, as I mentioned, Nikki, my girlfriend, is going to be in Melbourne tattoo artist. She's having going to bring a tattoo gun. She's going to have it all there. Are we getting a team tat? Matching flog cabin tattoos. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> Get a QR code for the, <laughs> for the live podcast. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna like? Because I found out during your speech. Because like Tom's best men, uh, Will, Will and Matt, mm-hmm. did a very good speech. It was very good. Because yeah, the, they were like, we got a bit of a concept for the speech, and I'm like, so it was a dual speech. Yeah, Team yeah, speech like together. together. But it was like we got a bit of a concept, and I'm like in my head, oh no. <laughs> and then they're like, it's a secret entries from Tom Whitcomb's diary. Okay. So, like, they've made a fake Tom Whitcomb diary and then read it out at various points of his life. See, with an idea like that, you're like, it's all in the execution, right? Because with that, it sounds like it could be a really shit idea. Mm. But if they nail it, like, you you could nail it as well. And it sounds like what you're saying is they did nail it. They absolutely nailed it. Like, I could tell, like, from, like, I think the first entry, they mentioned his copy of Neil Strauss's The Game. And I was like, (laughs) here we we are fucking on here, boys. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. When you're like, how's this going to go? And then straight away, it's fire. And you're like, yes. The the choice phrase for me is just, like, I think it was, like, talking about, you know, finally approaching Beatty, like, your your now wife's, like, ask her out on a date. It's like, it's time for me to roll up my sleeves and show her my tattoos. (laughs) 
<laughs> it was uh, very good. There was a lot of stuff talking about uh, how uh, when I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And they were, it was like after I was about me leaving my blue belt draped over my office desk when the girls would walk past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fun gear. Very good gear. <laughs> but the, the highlight for me was so like, they finished the beach, sit down, everyone's laughed, it was great. Then Mary just turns to me, it's just like, was that all that stuff really in his diary? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes it so much funnier. That was the when worst part. That there are people in that room who thought it was believable. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Not just believable, actual. Actual. <laughs> Look, there's so much fun when, like, some people wonder if a joke is real or not. I, I've been having that experience with one of the videos online right now about a joke about uh, the fact that Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk outsource things in their life. And so mm. I said, I outsource something in my life. I have a guy that comes in and sleeps with my wife. Mm. And I've had a bunch of people get it. But then I've also had uh, Arab and African men in my DMs going, Sir, how could you dishonor your wife? <laughs> <laughs> you are no man. You're a coward. <laughs> Do you respond? No. I mean, I, I respond to some of them on the public comments, not the individual Dude, DMs. You should reply being like, hey, this is the guy that fucks Hammo's wife. <laughs> he outsources his DMs to me too. <laughs> <laughs> See how far uh, you can go down this rabbit hole, brother. Man, it's like, you, sometimes you, you think a joke is so immediately obvious as a joke and then people are like, how could you dishonor your wife? Mm. You're a disgrace. You're not a man. You didn't even have a wife. No. That's how you dishonor her. You haven't even <laughs> fucking asked her. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, good wedding. Mm. Lovely time. Followed by uh, a honeymoon where obviously for the for the vloggers on the IG, they saw you trying to go to Wall Burgers. I, I tried. I tried my best. And it was closed. It was closed. Very disappointing. But uh, yeah, I don't know why it was closed. It was just Monday. Like you'd think that would be... Maybe it's because Mark Wahlberg was uh, in in Sydney. Maybe they had I don't know. They closed. They they invited all the staff. They had the AGM. <laughs> the AGM. The Wahlbergers AGM. All the hospo <laughs> staff. Mark Wahlberg's in there getting them prayed up. Did you consummate the marriage? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. You know what? That was, your, that was your first time having sex, was it not? <laughs> oh, I mean, if you could call it having sex, well, it, was, it was his first time having sex with anyone apart from your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Which I'm okay with, by the way. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you stepping in. The sincerity was fine in your wedding speech, but fucking save it, all right? <laughs> Don't need to hear it on the pod too. Uh, but no, it was very nice. I was very honoured to be a part of it, and it was a lovely time. Now let's move the fuck on to raw comedy. <laughs> raw Duggan. Raw we, Duggan. We raw comedy. The second greatest day of my life. Now let's talk about the first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might be the number one segue stitch of the year. I like it. Red hot. Actually, fuck, before we do that, pilot ad. Quick. God. Uh, am I doing this now? Yeah, we should do it now. All right, cool. Uh, big cliffhanger on the on the pilot ad while I check that Skinner doesn't hate me. Sort it. Beautiful. Um, yes. So, uh, just like uh, my wedding, this podcast is brought to you by <laughs> Pilot. Men's Health. Uh, we're writing, we write ads for each other every single week. Uh, they are genuinely sponsors of the podcast. If you do need any men's health products, you should use the code FLOGGERS20 at checkout to get them. But now I've written Tom an ad, and I'll be honest, I've written it quite quickly, so I don't know how funny it is. Tom? It's short and sweet. Here we go. Floggers, I've got a secret to tell you. You might know me as the long-haired Adonis Tom Whitcomb, but I'm wearing a wig. A wig made of hair I grew myself with Pilot's hair regrowth medication. <laughs> But before that, I was wearing an actual wig made of the hair of Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I took it from his museum in Seattle, gave it a very, very thorough wash, and tried to play guitar for a bit. That didn't take, but the hair loss medication did. Pilot, hair made hairy. <laughs> there we go. Just a quick one. Quick and easy. There we go. It'll do. Yeah. It'll do. It was, did, it we mention the co did you mention the code? Floggers, Floggers 20? Oh, I said it at the start. I front-ended the code. Oh, sorry. Dude, who says we're not innovating in the cabin? <laughs> I desperately want to know whether anyone's used that code, but only if the answer is yes. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, I don't want me or anyone else to know. Dude, it's, it's one of life's great mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Surely someone. Somewhere? Someone. Maybe we should use it. Surely some limp dick loser listens to it. <laughs> <laughs> Remove that for pilot, please. <laughs> Maybe we're taking the wrong approach for these commercials, trying to make them funny. Just bully people into it. Oi, you fucking soft cock <laughs> cowards. <laughs> you you bald fuck. How are you going to fuck Hamo's wife? <laughs> <laughs> Can't get flogged up on your own <laughs> to fuck Mrs. Hamilton. That just sounds like your mum. No, that's not great. Um, 
I'm sorry. Oh, so, right. raw comedy. We've got some raw comedy yarns. Mm. It's a, Australia's uh, great uh, open mic competition, new comedy competition. How do Am- they brand amateur. it? Yep. Amateur. Yeah, amateur comedy comedy competition. I did, I did the state final twice. Uh, Tom did the national final. And Dan, I believe you uh, started comedy before, like years before Raw was invented, right? <laughs> 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 I competed in raw comedy once. Was it me and Rodney Rude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, and, me and Mark Twain giving it a bash. Uh, <laughs> back then he was Samuel Clements. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might recognise me as my character from back then, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> did a lot of borscht stuff. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I did raw comedy once. Uh, did not make it out of the heats, and then the next year I had made too much money to do raw comedy again. That's funny that Rodney Dangerfield is like, take my wife, please. And African dudes like, your friend, you're disrespecting your wife. <laughs> 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 Uh, Raw, so you were you uh you, you got the call up. This is why this is why we're talking about it right now, right? You well, this, I think there's like a few a few yarns going through Raw, uh, but yes, uh, I I've I've finally this year, uh, in I, I think I competed in 2014, mm. and now in 2024 I was asked back to host <laughs> the wild card final. Do um, you are you going to do your joke? Uh, well, this is the thing. So I the reason I the reason I thought about talking this on the pod. It's because I believe, Hammer, to use your terminology, I got supremed. Oh. Supremed. Really? Yeah. Do you remember Hammer's joke about, you know, how to, uh, pizza runs in the family aren't called supreme? Yes. Oh, why? I said uh, pizza was in my DNA because my own grandmother is an actual pizza named <laughs> supreme. <laughs> it's a good gift. And so. Ooh. Sorry, give me one sec. I'm getting that thing again, but I don't know if it's a problem. All right. It's, already, it's been happening for a little bit. So. It's Look, gone now. Let's have to do we'll, it. We'll listen back and we'll do our best. Gone. Um, yeah. So I, I was I was asked to give an interview while I was in Adelaide, uh, which I thought was about my Adelaide Fringe show or my Melbourne International Comedy Festival show. Turns out it was paid for by Raw Comedy to promote me hosting the Raw Comedy Heat that I hosted. What? what? Yeah. Did we not pr- briefed on this? No, I just got censored like in my inbox. Like, hey, can you fill out this questionnaire? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. What was the publication? Scenester. Okay. And so I've, I've filled it out and they had like one extra question. How do you feel about hosting raw comedy? And like the whole thing was like, I was joking, like, you know, I'm a fucking comedian filling out a questionnaire. I'm not giving you like earnest answers. Absolutely. It was like, why'd you get into comedy? Uh, because my father was kidnapped when I was younger and they said I had to start performing stand-up comedy or else they'd release him, you know? Like it's all just <laughs> fucking yeah. garbage, right? Yeah. Um, and so for raw comedy, I was like, look, uh, it's, it's an honor uh, and I'm going to impress on the uh, contestants the importance of winning this competition because I lost the heat in 2014 and it's taken me 10 years to get back to this point. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, funny answer. Yeah. And then the he- the headline they ran with on all social media oh my God. is Daniel Muggleton on hosting raw comedy. It's an honor. What? <laughs> 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 just like I'm fucking just really excited to be there saying 18 names. Like what? <laughs> That would upset you. More than anything else they could have possibly said, that would upset you. Dude, so much. <laughs> Nothing's an honour. <laughs> I dislike all of it. Daniel Muggleson sues Seamster for defamation. <laughs> <laughs> it was not an honour. <laughs> I have opened for Steve Hofstadter. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it was just, I got stitched up so hard. You uh, it just reminded me of Supreme. No, but what's the, you did the joke on stage, which I liked, that you told me about it. You remember? Oh, I was about to announce the winners. And I was just like, I lost this competition. So if you don't win, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. This is like all these like 18 like new comedians all nervous in a room and I'm just riffing. <laughs> I felt like such a piece of shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll never I just f- want to hear the result. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget my first raw heat ever. I've been doing mm. comedy for, I guess, like five months. Mm. And they take you into the room and the room's massive. And Dave, the old manager of the store, is like there, and he's just being like so positive and so supportive. And he's just like, look, guys, just by being here tonight, you're taking a step that millions of people talk about doing and never, ever will. You're already winners just for being here tonight. It's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a great gig. Enjoy yourselves. And then he goes, Cam, any, any words of advice? And Cam Knight, who was emceeing it, sitting in that little kind of pulpit at the back of the comedy Mm. store, like a good 20 rows back from anyone else. And he's sitting there. He's got one leg up on the the seat in front of him and he's looking at his phone. He doesn't even look up. He goes, well, 
Maybe if you don't win it, one day you'll host it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honour. <laughs> it's an honour. Uh, yeah, no, it was it was very it was very bizarre because uh, like I felt like I needed to like be encouraging, mm. and I was like, hey. Gr- Good set. It does. It means a lot. I remember the I remember the comedians that did and didn't say encouraging things to me. <laughs> Justin Hamilton, very nice. Cam Knight, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had the they had the New South Wales State Final last week, and I went along, and it was a good show. You went along to Raw Comedy. Yeah, I went to the State Final just to watch it, and there was a lot of talent. It was very competitive. Mm. But the guy who won is based in Melbourne, and he came to compete in the New South Wales one. Why is that? Don't know. We'd have to ask him. Maybe he didn't think he could win the Melbourne one. Thought he could just come and beat these losers in Sydney. But and he did. Insult him, but he <laughs> did. <laughs> insult him, but did. <laughs> he played a beautiful game there. <laughs> he kicked their asses. But the thing which uh, made me happy was the people who got through got th- uh, got the most laughs. On the night. On the night. Which isn't always the case <laughs> yeah. when it comes to comedy competitions. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I, was pretty, I was pretty happy with the result in the end. But um, yeah, I would have rather it be two local Sydney bo- Sydney uh, comedians. I was going to say Sydney boys. <laughs> Sydney boys. I mean, we all would have preferred. Now <laughs> <laughs> they just slipped into private school headmaster mode. <laughs> just a couple of the boys. Really good um, competition on the night. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, all the men. <laughs> <laughs> so how's this? This is my Perth story about Raw. So here we go. Because um, it is a national comp. There's heats all around the country. There's finals all around the country, and the best of the best compete in Melbourne, like Tom. Mm. Yes. Sure did. Got there. Got the final. My girlfriend, you Nikki. Didn't, you didn't need to do the best of the night to get through. <laughs> 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 My girlfriend, Nikki, comic in Perth. She competed in the state final a few weeks ago in mm-hmm. Perth. And if you don't want to know the result, look away now. <laughs> <laughs> she, I, I would say. Raw comedy spoilers. <laughs> I just want to show up to the national final and be surprised about who's there. <laughs> <laughs> and we often are. <laughs> you the well, He's from Melbourne. <laughs> But she, I would say she would have been up there with the people that you would have thought were in contention mm-hmm. to take it out. Um, but the What a brave stance <laughs> to take about your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice that we've gone from you not even considering her a comedian <laughs> to believing she could win a competition <laughs> in just six <laughs> short episodes. <laughs> Did I say that on the podcast? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I called you on it and I loved I it. Thought we, I thought that was when we, were, we had uh, breakfast one day. No, no, no. You've oh, said it on air oh, and privately. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, she was definitely in contention. And, anyway, the girl who won it, mm. uh, a girl named Jazz, she uh, has only been doing comedy for like, I think she's been doing comedy for like six weeks. Whoa. Yeah. She's a natural. Yeah. And she's a ex-cop. Oh. And Nikki had a chat to her after the gig and said, Congratulations. And this girl, Jazz, said, thank you. Um, I actually got a lot of advice on stand-up from Andrew Hamilton. Oh. Whoa, that's you. The origin story. And so, I, it turns out, I was like, oh, shit, yeah, I did. Because when I was over in Perth in January for the Fringe Festival, I did a gig and this girl asked me out for the gig um, for any, any advice. She was a new comic. And I sat down with her for about 15, 20 minutes and gave her advice. And then six weeks later, she won the state final in Raw, Raw in Perth. So now I'm in the doghouse with my own girlfriend. Hammer, can we maybe sit down and maybe I can have a chance at Raw <laughs> next year? Mate. I'm willing to fly to Perth to compete. <laughs> I'll give you 15 to 20 minutes, mate. Just like I gave her. I'll give it to anyone who's not my girlfriend. <laughs> you know who I give 15 to 20 minutes to? Your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks to Pilot. Pilot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we did it. <laughs> that is the first time we've but, had continuity on this fucking thing. <laughs> but, but it was you just... You reckon they're going to realise we've got writers? <laughs> <laughs> so Nikki said to Jazz, oh, that's my boyfriend. And Jazz thought that she was joking. And then uh, Nikki told me, relayed this whole story to me, mm. which I thought to be very funny. Nikki didn't find it immediately as funny as I did. Because she was annoyed that the other people didn't know you had a girlfriend. Well, no, no. She was annoyed that um, I thought it was funny that I had given like, some advice like, casually to a girl who went on to kick her ass in a competition. <laughs> <laughs> I have gone for him. Lose, beat her, kick her ass. Just the escalation. <laughs> Fucking mop the floor with so, Nikki during Raw. <laughs> so I the, was the like, only joke she told was thinking that she was dating me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to be like, "Well, I'm sorry you lost, but I mean, let's all agree that is quite a funny. It's a funny turn of events. It's so, true. 
Yeah. And are you are you going to be the uh, Jazz's corner man uh, during the Raw in case she, she gets any cuts up there? If she wants me there, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's like, please, Hamo, just 15 minutes of advice. Like, I'm sorry, I got to go support Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that was a funny little anecdote. I got to say, if I was dating an ex convict and then I ended up <laughs> getting beaten at Raw by an ex cop, I would be very nervous <laughs> about my relationship. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it just seems like that's the story, right? Like, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Just speculating. <sighs> I was just trying to. I was just trying to be a nice guy. What and advice did you give? I have no idea. I, I think I probably just. She told me that she was. What do you want to going to do? Is have just like an incredibly inherently interesting backstory <laughs> and then talk about that <laughs> with charisma. I think that's essentially what I said. <laughs> I said, you have stuff there that no one else will have. Lean into that as heavily as you can and do as many gigs as you can between now and Raw. I mean, what else am I going to say? Mm. And then she's... I, th- I hear she's been rated as one to watch by Perth <laughs> criminals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's not mock my clothes up. <laughs> hey, hey, you got a new show, baby. It's your old clothes. Don't worry about it. Uh, I don't have anything as strong as that anymore. <laughs> Dude, maybe you should ask Jazz for some advice. Yeah. <laughs> if cops and criminals just work together, I don't know if you guys have seen The Departed, <laughs> but the city of Boston loses. <laughs> The uh, I remember because um, I remember Heggy saying he's like you know people like to go they go to the raw they go to the national final nah go to the heats that's where the cooked shit happens mm. and it's so true because you get like I remember one uh, in a year I don't remember I can't remember if it was after I had already done it like if I was in the heat or not I think I was actually and uh, Duggan was emceeing and Duggan was like he did the thing of like at four minutes you get a light at five minutes. The sets end at six minutes. They're gonna cut your mic off and and play you off. Mm. And this guy went out there and he just never took the microphone out of the stand and did the whole thing a cappella. And amazing. Did, and did like a ten minute long set. Oh, we uh, we've had a slight uh, light. I mean, now it seems moment. spooky, but I think they're censored, aren't they? I'll, I'll All right, back up. here we go. Here we go. A little bit of dancing. The lights are back, <laughs> We're on. back on. Uh. Yeah, it is grim in the heat. So this guy just like did a 10 minute long set because they couldn't cut his microphone off. <laughs> Eventually. Cut my microphone at six, huh? <laughs> yeah, Doug, I raise you a cappella, bitch. They're going to have to come off and like come on and kind of like shepherd him off the stage. He's like, he got us on a technicality there. <laughs> <laughs> Play with it. That's such a good loophole. Uh, he addressed it. Dude, I had one go long because I, I didn't know about the mic cutting thing. And then I had, I had a friend in the back watching and she's like, they've cut a mic. And I'm like, what do I do? And she's like, get her off. And I'm like, how do I get her off? I'm just behind the curtain. Mm. I can't just come out and grab the mic off her. They just start playing music. And then she like just kept going. She's like, the microphone on the microphone. doesn't need to be on. Anyway, she keep going. And just like just fucking crazy speed. How long did she go? About seven, eight minutes. Oh, yeah. And then so, so she got this big laugh being like, Aah! and everyone just laughed loud. And I just went, ladies and gentlemen, that was great. And she had to leave. And I was like, got it. That's good. I remember stuff. the first conversation I had with my now management when I was in Melbourne last year. We were walking around a f- like a some kind of pond in Melbourne, and mm. we were having coffees. And then he got a text said, "I got to go. Sam Campbell needs me to go find him a shepherd's hook." <laughs> <laughs> and then the next night, I went to the show, and he starts like doing some weird stuff. And then this shepherd's hook, just long shepherd's hook from back back side stage, just starts to try and yank him off. And I'm like, they they need that uh, these raw heat. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, someone, someone should get Sham, Sam Campbell to MC these roids. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's got a hook. <laughs> That'll be so good. How do we get him off? Oh, don't worry. Just use the hook. Have you ever been played off or hooked or any of that? I got played off at Star Bar one time. Oh, really? Yeah. Music up. Off you go. Yeah, right. For doing like six and a half in a six. Oh, God. He was, he was a stickler. Dante? Oh, that's Dante, baby. Yeah, I was <laughs> the one. That's the one. One of my favorites. The rules. Got to stick to him. Don't fuck around. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he reprimanded me once for having notes on my hand, which I never did again. Yeah. That's you know, an important... Lo- I think that's a good lesson to learn. Mm. I think. Yeah. But six, uh, doing six and a half and a six is, and <laughs> getting played off is a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did find it pretty funny because everyone else was just fucking eating it and I was doing pretty well. <laughs> and they, they played, played me off the crowd. We're kind of like, oh. I hate, <laughs> I hate to see what he would do to Rory Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> Rory just started dancing. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's impossible to play this guy if he fucking loves it. <laughs> Uh, did you how how was like the national final? I don't think I, I don't think I went. I used to go to the national final. Then I was there. Yeah, thanks. Gave up on it. But did <laughs> I, did I, did I didn't know you then. I don't think. Did no, I? no, you did because it was the first time I went on tour with you. Was uh, down to Wollongong and Canberra, and we stayed in Jering Jeringong. Oh, in Mittagong. Mittagong. In Kettle's house. And you just kind of presumed that because they both ended with gong, they must be close to each other. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. <laughs> uh, that's great. Dude, this was so funny because I was like, yeah, so I got a gig in Wollongong and I got a gig in Canberra. So if I stay in Mittagong, I'm close to both of them. <laughs> and like Mittagong is 90 minutes from Wollongong, which is how far it is to Sydney to Wollongong. And from Canberra, it's like two and a half hours, which is the same as Sydney. It was fucked. Yeah. But I got a lot of time in the car with Dan and I, and <laughs> wow. uh, and we went and played golf at uh, one of the he golf does clubs. This thing every time on tour, Tom's like, "Can we do an activity?" And I'm like, "Can't we just sit and stew? <laughs> I got to check ticket sales can't every seven s- minutes. Can we sit and stew, guys? Just leave me outside. I want to go pace for a bit. <laughs> no compliments. <laughs> I mean, we went for a little beachy walk. We, 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 I got lost. That was when I got yeah, lost yeah. at the fucking but, Emerald Beach, um, Sapphire Beach, mm. Shark Beach. I don't know. Bit sharky, yeah. Bit sharky, but, bit sharky. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not one for huge. I'm not huge on the activities. If the activity was go to the pub and like bet on the greyhounds or something, then like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a wholesome. I think you're confusing activity with a vice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if the activity happened to also be an addiction. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love the greyhounds as well. Not even the trots. <laughs> nah. well, I guess the afternoon, baby. That's greyhounds hour. <laughs> Hey, you want to go down to the pub and we to go down to the pub and bet on the horses? What are we on vacation, <laughs> <laughs> dude? We're on vacation. That's my job. <laughs> um, and uh, and then when we were playing golf, you I remember asking you a million questions about mm. what I should do at my raw set. Yeah, trying to fuck me up in my backswing. <laughs> fuck. Uh, you so no. love that, eh? What questions? Yeah, it's like raw, raw chat strategy. I mean, was, as someone with like absolutely no experience, yeah, it's just like, hey, what were the, hey, I was, I was through the heats. So you wanted advice yeah. on I this guy? Tom, what were the semifinals like? <laughs> 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 Did you do the same yeah. set? I think I should do a different set between the heat and the semi. Yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. What are you doing? If you want to win Roy, you got to ask one man, Did Andrew get, Hamilton. Did you get to meet Cameron yes. Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> What's he like off stage? <laughs> So now we know why he didn't win. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, no, and then no, the ro- the raw final. It was weird because you're there from like seven a.m. or like eight a.m. till three p.m. Why they get you there? What, you just do- in the bowels of the town hall, basically. Like you're in, like they have a little kind of function room where you spend the whole day. You have to run your entire set on stage into an into a dead microphone to everyone else while they sit there and watch. Which why is, is the very- mic dead? Like it's just it's just it doesn't attach to anything. It's like a it's like a dress rehearsal. It's that very weird. Sounds horrific. And then, and that's early. So you're doing that, and then you do like little bits and pieces of interviews. I think before, and then they do like uh, they do hair and makeup. I was like, I'll take the hair, but I'm the hammer school of makeup. You know, you got to be on TV, baby. Get some <laughs> makeup. Get your get your shit leveled out. Maybe it was the other. Maybe I got makeup, not hair. Just so you don't shine. Just shine. Yeah, you don't want to shine. Remember when uh, we spoke to Amos about the fact that he did 15 minutes on stage when in the Raw National Final mm. in a five. The, the uh, it'd be funny to, to think that like when he did the, the, the <laughs> rehearsal, he also did 15 <laughs> in a five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in front of everyone. They're like, you're not going to do that on stage, are nah, you? No, 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 of <laughs> <laughs> the irony, a completely different 15. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wanted to do my fisting material with the dead mic. <laughs> And then, oh, and then for the yeah, final, I'll do my women's point. sport bit. <laughs> you know, oh, great. So did you do exactly word for word the same? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. I, I, this uh, is Tom I, Whitcomb. Yeah, he follows rules. Risk. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> Tom Whitcomb is if ETFs were a person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a fucking financial nerd comment, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess a lot of the floggers would know what an ETF is. Well, you'd fucking hope so. Yeah. Nerd comment like that would have crushed at my wedding. Oh, it would have killed. <laughs> Why didn't I say it there? <laughs> For any of my fans, an ETF is an exchange traded fund. It's basically uh, it's an index. It's like it's a group of it's you like a a group of shares. It's like a low risk. It's like the version of investing on the stock market. Spread out across like 100 shares. But I didn't know what it stood for, so I was pretty impressed by that. Yeah, Not right. only can you spell things, you can sound out acronyms. Mm-hmm. I write it. <laughs> I know there are, there are uh, they're a good investment. I decided to invest all my money in gambling and drugs instead, but um, 
if I had my time again, I would have put money in ETFs. Yeah, mm. but then you would have 150,000 Instagram followers. There we go. That's know? true. Maybe if investing in, instead of investing in one pizza restaurant, you invested in 100 pizza restaurants. Simultaneously. Yeah. So you could become a Domino's franchisee? Are talking exchange, tra- <laughs> exchange traded food? <laughs> is that the F? <laughs> exchange, exchange traded food is just you at a Bay Marais. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at an Indian wedding? Like, do they have an ETF here? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't believe I wasted all my stomach on naans. <laughs> no dividends on that, but the franking credits are out of this world. <laughs> uh. Look, I think that's it. Yeah, I think, I think we good. did it. We made it. A, a fast cabin because we're about to head to Melbourne. We are indeed. All flogs about to head to Melbourne to hopefully engage with some Melbourne floggers. I have had like really no feelings about it until today. I woke up feeling extremely excited. Excited? About Melbourne. About that's Melbourne. That's yeah. Nice. I didn't, I, it's like starting to feel like Christmas because now I'm getting all the memories of just how much fun I had last year. Mm-hmm. That was it's important for you to know that this year, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was when Muggleson and I originally got to know each other, getting pissed and having Guzman at 3 a.m. Oh, that's going to happen for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm staying out of the city, so it's going to be very costly this year. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still going to fucking right. do it. Pick your, yeah, pick your battles. How are you going to do that? Are you going to drive in? Are you going to... Uh, sometimes. I dare say this this Sunday, this coming Sunday, when we're, we're getting on the gags, which is like mm. a comedy show, not a not an indictment against Hammer's, you know, corrections order. Um, yeah, I'll be. I will not be driving because mm. I think I, I Swans in the afternoon. Oh yeah, show at night, and then the gags, baby. Swans, mm. um, Swans playing in Melbourne or Swans playing, playing in Melbourne at are the G. Are you going to the game? Hopefully. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping. Hoping uh, Sam Taunton can hook us up. Ooh, you he, could men- just... he mentioned a cheeky little box. Oh wow. Yeah. Very excited. That'd be sick. The uh, get. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to a live AFL game. Uh, You've never been to a live AFL game. Nah. We should go. All right. What do you remember? See if Tom. On Sunday, the box is full. <laughs> <laughs> like, is, that all, is that all I had to say to get invited? <laughs> I've been to one, but I'd like to go again. <laughs> yeah, I uh, love well, the project. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about the project in the box, bro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that'll, that'll be fun. But yeah, so go come to our shows if Please you're anywhere in Melbourne. Yeah, uh, spread the word. We'd, we'd love some Melbourne floggers to be there. I had a Melbourne flogger reach out about chicken shops are definitely a staple of Melbourne outer suburbs. I've got the car down there. We're going to go. Oh, nice. We're going to record a pod. We're going to go eat some chicken. Mm. We're going to record another pod. Yeah, I'm keen for that. Let's do it. It's time. It's time we did it. It is time. I want a morning and afternoon pod with food in the middle where we can chat. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> well, Not at all. We're no. going to do a pod sandwich. We're going to do a <laughs> chicken pod sandwich. A pod roll. Pod roll. <laughs> pod roll. Totally ruins the sandwich metaphor. I fucked <laughs> it. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. I think by the time this comes out, there'll be 2,000 on the gram. We're pretty close. We should we should be hitting it, I reckon. Surely. I reckon we're breaching. We're breaching. The cabin grows. Breaching? That wasn't great, was it? The cabin grows ever bigger every week. Thanks for supporting us. Stay flogged up. Check the dodgems. Bye.